Hi everybody, it's Randy. So I really don't have a good topic for this video, but I really just wanted to make it because I wanted to have this title, this title. When the narcissist goes brain dead. I just think it's hilarious because at this point, like three years into my recovery, that's, that's where I'm at. It's like, I can't, I don't blame myself. I don't see myself as a codependent. I don't want the narcissist back. I see the narcissist as somebody who went brain dead, but kind of voluntarily brain dead, if that makes any sense. Um, it was like a choice to go brain dead for the narcissist. Um, maybe a metaphor would be, let's say somebody who has a, uh, a gene that is going to probably cause a terminal illness and they have the ability to um, alter the gene through some, you know, pretty rigorous mechanism, but it, it's 100% to work. They have the ability to alter that gene and not know that they will not become terminally ill and know that they will extend and uh, increase the quality of their life and the length of their life significantly. And that person has that in their hand um, and then they don't do it. So that's, that's what I mean by the narcissist going brain dead voluntarily. Um, I know a lot of people think that, you know, the narcissist is, you know, the way they are and it's just their mask that they hold on for a very long time until it comes off. But there are some people who seem to validate my experience of somebody that was really low, lower, on the lower end of the narcissistic scale. Yes, did have a mask, but that mask was only there maybe for the last, toward the end of the relationship, of a long-term relationship, covering up how he had actually deteriorated but still having the ability to play act for, for years on end. It's really hard for me to believe that he was that talented to play act when he's in this living situation with me and we're together all the time. I mean, he just, he just didn't go the right way when he had the chance. He didn't, he was that golden child that had some opportunities to turn in the right direction. And instead of turning in the right direction, or instead of even remaining stagnant or the status quo, he completely flipped his lid. And all I can say is that he's mentally ill. And, you know, it's hard to describe when somebody says, you know, why did you get a divorce? I don't, I have used various <laughs> reasons. None of them seem to be the right response to really depict it to someone. You can't really tell somebody, well, because my ex-husband was a narcissist because that's becoming an everyday word and it's be, being used so wrong by the media they're not giving it the kind of leverage the kind of strength 
um, they're really minimizing the meaning of it because it is so complicated. Um, I, when I say I, you know, I got a divorce because my husband was mentally ill, then it's like the, the listener um, kind of like feels sorry for him because he was mentally ill and it makes me look like an ogre. Oh, you left a mentally ill person. Oh, you're terrible. But if you say like, oh, my ex was crazy or psycho, then you sound like all those guys that we hear that are, that always call their ex crazy and psycho. And, you know, <laughs> no one really believes that. They just kind of roll their eyes and think, oh yeah, this is the two to tango situation. And everybody says their ex was crazy and psycho. So that means nothing. Um, you could say your ex cheated, and if he or she did, well, um, people understand that, and really, that gets the best response, um, because people do still think that cheating is wrong in general, especially, you know, people over 40, at least, so... To say that, I guess, gets somewhat of a response. So, I mean, what would I say? Let's see. He's brain dead, psycho, mentally ill, and he cheated. And then, and then at some point, you know, if you really explain, if, if they really understand the depth of it, like how bad this guy really was... Then they start to think, well, if he was so bad, why the hell did you marry him? You know, how, do, you know, like, what's wrong with you? You're, you know, you married him. So you can't really, you can't really say that. So it's like no one, no one, no one can really understand it. They don't have enough time to hear your stories. They don't care. And you're not supposed to talk about your exes with anybody anyway. You're supposed to just be over it, right? So here I sit and all I can think of is my ex is brain dead. It was some gradual kind of experience. He's really dead to me because his original personality is completely gone. His behavior continues and it's worse than ever. And the kind of little girls that he has engaged in relationships with are just uh, the trashiest um, low lifes and most confused, um, pitiful, um, pitiful people. And him thinking so highly of himself is just a facade. Oh, did I mention hoarding and and that, you know, people think that hoarders are depressed. Well, yeah, they may be, but they also may be OCD and ADD and um, he lives so nasty and the women who he has hooked up with accept that nastiness and it's like, I just wish no one would be with him. I just wish everybody would leave him the fuck alone because he doesn't deserve to be with any human that breathes, nor an animal. He needs to be isolated from society and from every living thing. That's what would make me happy. That's where he belongs. He belongs locked up in jail or on some island by himself isolated because he's brain dead he makes makes the worst dis possible decisions in the world does not give a shit about himself or anyone else and I can't describe the guy to anybody who who doesn't doesn't know him even people who know him don't even get it but but just a very few and it's so hard that I cannot be friends with any of the people that 
knew him just a little bit. And uh, yes, yes, I'm wasting my energy even thinking about it. But, you know, this stuff does not go away. I knew it wasn't going to go away. And it does dissipate, though. It does get better. It, sometimes it even gets funny to think about. And so, you know, my brain dead ex narcissist husband can rot in hell alone. And I wish it would happen now. That's how I feel. And I'm living a wonderful life, yes. The best revenge is a good life, right? I'm fine, I'm doing well. Vacation's coming up, ready for the retreat. Can't wait to meet everybody. Laying in the sun, partying with friends, working, having a good old time over here by myself and still resenting that my ex-husband went Braden dead. 